I can still remember the first time I saw an icon of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Or perhaps it was just the first time that I noticed it. Maybe I had seen it many times before and just didn't pay it any attention. I must have been all of about four or five years old, staying the weekend with my grandmother in her home in a rural Nova Scotia village. It hung on her wall. The look of it was so unusual, odd is how I would have thought of it. I could see that it was a woman with clothes on that I couldn't identify, a boy child in her arms, and some angels flying around. Yes, odd, but somehow intriguing and strangely comforting. I liked to look up at it. In the following years, I could see that image often, in churches and chapels, on the walls of many families. It showed up everywhere. Only when I began to pursue a religious and priestly vocation in the Redemptorist community did I learn the history and meaning of this picture. The year 2016 marks the 150th anniversary of Pope Pius IX entrusting the original icon of our Mother Perpetual Help to the Redemptorists. It's an intriguing story, perhaps you've heard it before. The origins of the icon are unknown, but scholars suggest that it was painted in the 14th century. Through a remarkable series of circumstances, it found its way into the Church of St. Matthew, located on the street that runs from the Basilicas of St. Mary Major and St. John Lateran in Rome. This is where the Virgin Mary, through a revelation, had indicated that she wanted her image to be venerated between these two impressive basilicas. It soon became noted for the healings and other favors obtained by prayer to the Blessed Mother before this image. When Napoleon Bonaparte's troops conquered Rome in 1798, the non-believing commander of the French troops concluded that there were far too many churches and chapels in the Eternal City so he set about to dismantle a good number of them. Among those destroyed was the Church of St. Matthew. Thereafter, the fate of this miraculous image of our Mother of Perpetual Help seemed unknown. In 1855, the Redemptorist Congregation, having spread its ministry beyond the Kingdom of Naples and taking on an international flavor, moved its generalate from Pagani to Rome. They acquired a villa on what is now Via Merulana, the street that runs between the basilicas of St. Mary Major and St. John Lateran. They built their community church on a spot not far from where St. Matthew's had been. In the early 1860s, a popular Jesuit preacher was giving a series of sermons on miraculous images of the Blessed Virgin. One such sermon focused on the missing miraculous image of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Hearing a description of the icon, a young Roman Redemptorist realized that this missing picture was the very one that he had often seen as a young altar server, serving Mass at a side altar in a nearby Augustinian monastery. With the joy of someone who has found a lost treasure, he and his Redemptorist confreres petitioned the Pope to have this icon entrusted to them and to be placed according to the Blessed Mother's own instruction in a church between St. Mary Major and St. John Lateran. On April 26, 1866, Pope Pius IX gave the miraculous icon to the Redemptorist Congregation with the instruction to make her known and loved throughout the world. I dare say that the Redemptorists have been faithful to their commission. What do you see in this icon? What is depicted there? Well, front and center is Mary, the Blessed Mother. In her arms is the boy Jesus looking up at the angels, while Mary is looking out at us. 
They and the angels are identified by the Greek letters near them, Mother of God, Jesus Christ, the Archangel Gabriel, and Michael the Archangel. The angels are carrying what will become the instruments of Jesus' passion. Gabriel carrying a cross, and Michael holds a spear and a sponge at the end of a hyssop stick. A picture is worth a thousand words. I'm sure you've heard that saying before. So what is the story behind this icon? According to the legend, one day when Jesus was still a young boy growing up in Nazareth, the archangels Michael and Gabriel appeared to him, carrying these frightful instruments of torture and death. The innocent boy, frightened by such a sight and wondering what it might mean, ran straight away into his mother's arms. He ran so fast, in fact, that he broke the strap of one of his sandals. You will notice that it's dangling from his foot. For her part, Mary comforts and consoles the child, assuring him that she will protect and help him, that all will be well. Her gaze at us, who look upon this image, suggests that she will also assure us in our fears and needs, that she will be our perpetual help. The Blessed Virgin Mary has shown herself throughout the Christian history to be a true mother to the faithful. This has indeed been a mother-child relationship with all the warmth that this connotes. Years ago when I was the director of novices in my community, I had one novice in particular whose mother died when he was very young. He was introduced to the icon of our mother perpetual help and found great comfort in relying on her help and encouragement. I'd like to end this reflection with a well-known prayer attributed to St. Bernard of Clairvaux called the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my Mother. To you do I come. Before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. Amen. <laughs>